Hey, everybody, we're back with another episode of Big Talk Talk About About Small Business. And thankfully, my partner, Eric Howerton, is back this week. Well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate Uh, you busting me out about not being here last week. I was here last week. No, you weren't. Or was was that the week before? Must must have been the week before. Okay. Yeah, but I was late last week. Okay, is that it? Well, anyway... (laughs) Uh, yeah, I had to do one of these by myself and it's always more entertaining with Eric here. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, and hopefully informative as well. Hmm. Hopefully so. I mean, I have opinions. You do have that. Just, it, of course, everyone has them as they say. I won't get into what that old adage is about opinions. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, no, they're good opinions, but, um, but we also have a guest with us today. Um, Matt Francis who is the founder and president of Ozark Integrated Circuits, is here with us today. And uh, I met Matt like maybe a year or two ago, and I was impressed with the guy. He's he's a very interesting guy. Congratulations, um, Matt. You, you've impressed Mark. <laughs> well, well specific, Mark Dwight. actually, specifically, Mark said at our first visit, you're weird. Well, yeah, I like I you. See that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we 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 value nonconformity here, absolutely, in our personal and business relationships, <laughs> and uh, and and you certainly have done that. And your business is a very unique business that we'll get into in a little bit. But so, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where did you grow up, and how did you get into what you do? Well, sure. Thanks, Mark. Well, pleasure to be here with you. Um, yeah, so I grew up all over. I'm a I'm a child of of aerospace. So oh, nice. Yeah. So I was born in Michigan. Uh, we lived in in New Jersey for several years. My dad actually started installing radios down in uh, uh, for Falcon Jet in Little Rock. Mm-hmm. So both my parents are from Arkansas. I used to actually work with them. Yeah. Back in the in the, around 1983, Falcon Jet um, from a facility standpoint and. Um, it was cool. People don't realize they were French jets. They flew them over here with a pack of instrumentation that they would take out and take back over and yep. fly. Yep, and they still over. do that to this day. It, and uh, yeah, so yeah, so my dad, my dad, dad knocked on them, huh? yeah, he knocked on the door in the seventies and said, uh-huh. I, uh, "There's a job for a draftsman." And they he interviewed and they said, "Well, you're not qualified, but you want to work on airplanes." <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> and so we ended that up. That gives with, me a lot of faith in, 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 in <laughs> us, so, us blanks. Right? You want to work on the wings? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he ended up uh, uh, working his way up to uh, uh, being the uh, uh, in charge of spares for North America. So that's how we ended up. Really? I was born in Michigan, and he, uh, uh-huh. uh, and then we moved to New Jersey, uh, and he did that there. And so I spent my first six years in New Jersey. Then we moved to Texas, where he was a, a national uh, tech rep for them. And then we uh, moved up to Tulsa, where he... I know you're going to find the shocking. Went to go work at a startup. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, so, we either follow the yeah, lead of our parents uh, or we yeah. do the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Seems, and yeah. I don't think I understood it was a startup. It was just <laughs> another job. You know, but yeah, it was. And so I actually kind of grew up around airplanes, and uh, that was mm-hmm. that was a company in uh, uh, Tulsa, still there, BizJet, um, that, that mm. refurbishes and, and does maintenance on business jets. So. Cool. That's probably where I got the bug for what o, part of what Ozark does, which is aerospace. Mm-hmm. Is growing up, growing up around yeah. engine shops and things like that. And then uh, when I uh, when it came time uh, to go to college, I was well, I was growing up in Oklahoma. I was all set to go uh, go be a go be a cowboy at Oklahoma State. And uh, this this John White guy offered me a chancellor scholarship to the U of A. Mm. And so I was in a in a in a class there in the late '90s, and uh, and then stuck around. They, they were Walton Fellowship, and uh, the the rest is sort of history. So so now you got three degrees in total, didn't you? No, I got four degrees. Four to dang, Mark. <laughs> Good look. Sorry about that. The thing that, I Matt. like about Matt is he's got all this education. He's a PhD, yeah. but he's not like you can see. He's a very yeah, practical. Yeah. Kind yeah, of down to earth guy. Uh, so. Academia. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. My my Christmas vacation was going out in the shop and working on tractors. So yeah, it's a good, beautiful, it's a good, good background. Along. I got a tractor too. I need your help. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now you're you have engine. You pursued engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, well, obviously. so yeah, I, I actually started as a mechanical engineer because uh-huh. of my love of of engines mm-hmm. and cars and things. And then uh, I along sure that. Yeah. And along the way, I, I started realizing is like if you're going to work in work in this, the, the electronics are even were you know becoming at that time even more important. Mm-hmm. So I I ended up switching over to electrical engineering. 
Uh, then I and then I was like, well, this is interesting, but I want to know a little more. So then I doubled in physics. <laughs> wow. And then I, did, I once I doubled in physics, I got the quantum mechanics, and I said, I have learned enough. I'm good. <laughs> this is as deep as I want to go. So I stopped there. Uh, ended up getting a master's and a PhD in in double E in electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. Nice. Wow. Dang. And so <laughs> you did it. Congratulations, man. <laughs> now, but you didn't go into academia. I mean, obviously, with a PhD in electrical engineering, you can have a really good job in academia. I mean, people don't realize these guys start out at like two hundred plus. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a good it, and and it's a nice lifestyle. But you didn't up up to, for that. Right? I, I I like making things. That's, yeah. that's my thing. And uh, and I think there's more opportunity to do that now in academia than there was back then. But I I because of all the labs. Yeah, and and and, and, and we're and rightfully so. It's what yeah. we need to be focusing incubators on. and things that we have. But uh, but but no, I was like I so you know I work, I went and worked. At, uh, I had a unique opportunities while I was in in school. I, I went and did internships and co-ops everywhere. I worked at Hewlett Packard when they were the biggest tech company in the world, worked on some of the biggest chips in the world, mm -hmm. got the bug for that. Um, I, uh, I worked for the Air Force Research Lab up in Dayton, Ohio, and got to see like all, like that was a whole side of like the federal research. I had no yeah. idea what we did to, to enable our war fighters. Did you see like any of the UFOs and stuff? Oh, there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I know, uh, sure, I, yeah, I know what you said. I, yeah. I worked in the building that supposedly, uh, you know, they, they moved yeah. the aliens from Is Oswell to, yeah. and, and we had a fire, we had a uh, tornado drill went down the basement. I did not see a single alien. Dang Dang it. I was hoping you this could have been the best this. podcast of all time. It could have been huge, Mark. Oh, I mean, man, I'm telling you, buddy. If we brought out the alien truth, yes, we could have. Dude, could we, we could unmask it right here, right here. <laughs> on, on big talk about small business. So, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so, no, sorry. Yeah. We so it. I, I said, I t well, I spent my, you know, when I had my base pass, I looked everywhere. Yeah. I did yeah. not find any. Sure. But, uh, did so, you just Bob Lazar, though? Yeah. He's, he knows it all. I, I, <laughs> I don't even think the guy's got a degree. Um, I, I'm not sure there's any evidence he actually worked um, for the government. But yeah. go on. Yeah. I'm sorry. So anyway, so, you know, I, I said uh, when I uh, when I got into graduate school, uh, that was one of the, I wanted. I, I've always, like I said, came from a, a family of uh, entrepreneurs, small business owners. I said even even when my dad was working at these companies, my parents were, were usually running businesses on the side. Um, financial services, mortgages, whatever. I was always, you know, sort of seeing. Uh, my mom was a realtor when I when I learned to drive. Yeah. I, I learned to drive in a in a, a Lincoln Continental because it was a realtor car, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so so I've always had that bug. Uh, whether I, whether I had a job or not, I always kind of wanted a side gig. And so uh, mm -hmm. when I got into graduate school, um, that that there, the opportunity came up to be involved in a startup, and it was a uh, kind of transferring some of the things I had worked on in graduate school. Um, and it was in modeling and simulation, so mm -hmm. electronic circuits. So you want to make them operate. And in that case, it was uh, like uh, in space. So there's radiation. Radiation affects the circuits, and so you have to design yep. for that. Mm -hmm. So I worked on soft temperature and extreme yeah, temperature. Yeah, well, and that's where I started to learn about extreme temperatures. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I did that for uh, for five years. You know, and like most startups, it wasn't successful. But that's what I, you know, I tell a lot of young people if they want to go. Uh, if they got want to go work, uh, they think they want to start a company. I said, go work for one first. Yeah, go work right. for a startup. Yeah, yeah. because good, I yeah. learned a lot of things not to do. <laughs> sure. I learned, you know, learning what not to do is every <laughs> bit as important sometimes oh, as learning what hell to yeah, do. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So, but I know Eric yeah. learned everything from me. I no, did. Yeah. 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 No, you, uh, it's was, true. No, I it is so true. He is far more successful. <laughs> no, no, no ever that's was. not true. No, that's it is true. true. No, it's, it's not. absolutely true. Nice. Go on. So, 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 yeah. So, but you know, I learned yeah, about it. I learned more. about that application uh -huh. area, and then what that's that so that's what led to um, that's what led to starting Ozark and focusing on the hardware side. And I said, so how did you do that? How did well, you start? I, I love software. Okay? Right. Like that's one of the things uh, I said, if you, if I could go sit down and go work on something for, you know, a day, I'd go write some software. Don't get to do it a lot these mm. days. But mm -hmm. what I figured out is I didn't like selling software. Mm -hmm. And I did, I really didn't like selling software to engineers. Yeah. Because um, they, they're pretty harsh critics. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> sure. Yeah. They always <laughs> wanted to do something different than what's and, and one of the things for. I learned is I, th I think if you're, if you're uh, definitely with technical mm -hmm. um, products, mm -hmm. it's really good to have a relationship where, of, of respect to the point that your customers think what you do is magic. 
that's mm. that's a good place to be. Well, it helps if you're an engineer selling to engineers. There's no doubt about that because they don't have a lot of respect for people yeah, who aren't. Yeah. Exactly. You so you yeah. so, someone like me. Yeah. yeah. Or me. <laughs> so <laughs> or me. <laughs> now you suits. It's like we're, so, we're not even suits, but they would still I, I got called that before. Yeah. It's like, well, hey, man, you just want to go have something to eat? I mean, that's yeah. what I'm here for, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just go have something to eat and talk about it. <laughs> so, so, so you, you mentioned yeah. farming along the way. Yeah, along the way. Uh, yeah, I, my, I, uh, uh, I, I had grown up, let's say, just around uh, equipment, engines. You know. Sure, you got to be the, handy on a farm. I, well, I didn't grow up on a farm. I, yeah. I, I, uh, but. But I, I guess, I don't know, I, we had a big garage mm-hmm. and I became all of my friends shop <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> to the point I had my friends used, uh, friends, parents would pay me to fix their cars, uh-huh. right? To fix the kids' cars. Yeah, so sure, right. That's what I did in high school. Uh, one of many things. And so, uh, when I, I met my wife, uh, at the U of A in marching band and, uh, that's that I, I, <laughs> uh, participated in for five years of undergraduate. You were in marching band yourself? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, I was the, uh, I ended up being the, uh, the, I played uh, drums and I was the captain of the <laughs> captain of the drum line. Awesome. <laughs> Damn, Damn, Matt. He's done everything. <laughs> I see. The, the thing is too, that Matt hasn't gotten into yet is he is like solely responsible for making Elkins, Arkansas into a decent town. I mean, you really? like I, lit the fire. I, I, I said I am not there. solely responsible, but, but, <laughs> but maybe you and we'll, your wife are. Yeah, okay. yeah we'll, we'll talk about that. It's a, it's a, a great, that's where I was leading to. It's a great community yeah. that we, uh, I think we, it's we, beautiful we've, we, we've, we've, we've helped people realize uh, mm-hmm. what, what a great, uh, great asset it is in North of Arkansas. But, um, no, uh, so I met my wife uh, in marching band, and uh, and and so oh, well, what came with with her were, were uh, four horses, uh, uh, yeah. and so that's where the dude I've been yeah. there. Okay. I, I, my daughters are both into it. My oldest has a horse farm, you know. Yep. Yeah, so. Well, yeah, and that's uh, we've sold her hay before. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Everything we're all related here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's so, so you know, incestuous. Well, our market saw that. So I travel, and people are like, you know, I, I go all over the world, and. I'll say I'm from Arkansas, and there'll be someone in the room, and, and we know each other. Yeah, know someone. Yeah, right. and, and people are like, "Are there like 12 people there?" I was yeah. like, "No, nah, it's more like 15." <laughs> yeah, it's like 15. <laughs> yeah, or so, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, so we, so you know, I, I, I learned how to ha- sort of along the way how to how to buck bales and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, at some point, it became pretty apparent if I wanted to see my wife, and she wasn't going to be spending all her time commuting to go take care of her horses. Right. I needed a place for them, so that's yeah. that's how we ended up in Elkins. So wow, we found kind of our dream property out there. We have ten acres right in the middle of that's town right. uh, with uh, sort of a historic farmhouse mm. uh, that we're, we're both in the old houses. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you redid that. Yeah, it took seven years to do that. God, <laughs> did it? Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And was that just? So frustrating the whole way through. Oh, or was it was. It? I mean, it was a. It, it was a labor of love. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I said. Actually, it was my second hundred plus year old house to, to mm. renovate. And uh, yeah, no, I what I witnessed the transformation over time. I mean, you could see like, wow, somebody's really doing something with this house. <laughs> yeah, you have to be meticulous. And, and, yeah, that, sure, right. Yeah. But when yeah. I bought the property, I didn't really understand farming at all. Yeah. And we bought ten acres, and we we accidentally bought like you know only so, some of the few ten eight flat acres in Northwest Arkansas, mm. right mm. on the White River. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, so you right on the river. Yeah, and we're we're just I mean real close. Just, yeah. I, I basically looks out my back door, and so uh, yeah. So the first summer we had it, we realized this is more than four horses can keep up with. Mm. And so. I better get more horses. <laughs> well, <laughs> and then I was like, hey, it's kind of expensive. And so that's where it said it kind of started. I got a tractor and then I went down to the, the, the local harps and there was a, there was an ad for a hay baler for sale for $400. I, and wow, the next thing yeah. I know, I, I became a, 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 a farmer. That's great. And so I actually enjoy, I said, I, I said, I love working on cars, but I actually ended up loving working on tractors and farm yeah. equipment even more. Cause you, you just, you look at it, you can see exactly it's how really it works. It's simple, isn't it? Yeah. And, and who cares if there's scratches in the body work or whatever. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, yeah. It's about making it work. And so, uh, so yeah, I really got into that over the years. I've, I've got like five or six tractors now, which is stupid for the 10 acres, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they go back from 1956 to early eighties. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so all sorts of different kinds and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's a, that's that's definitely what become one of my my favorite hobbies and passions. It, it, it like most of them somehow makes money too. My, you know, my that's, <laughs> that's the yeah. way you got to do it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I got. I've been getting into like moving dirt. I love like I got some 
property that I've just bought some equipment where I, you know, I got a skid steer, go out yeah. there and just tear some stuff up, clean clean debris. I have some property out on the river, and so it's just nothing but a trash can of flood debris. Well, yeah, yeah. So there's always something. That Beautiful, gotta, though, that you can take that in yeah, your and own hands. Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly so relaxed. satisfying. And that's it's extremely a, satisfying. Yeah, so the, the Meditative. Winter, yeah, in the winter, I gotta, I've got i got to work on this equipment because in the summer, that's it's all about I'm out yeah. there. And right. yeah, that sense of satisfaction of you, you lay it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, I never said so that was growing up. I never had that opportunity yep. to, to have the satisfaction of saying, like, look, I filled that barn with that's hay, right. and it's going to feed all these animals. It's awesome. And these and these other people's animals, and Mark's mm-hmm. daughter's <laughs> Yeah, God i got to sell some hay to Mark. Yeah, I mean, I know. It's, <laughs> it's like I said, it's... Uh, it's it, it, I'm not into that yeah, so. hay burner, so I'll, I'll leave that to you and your wife and my daughter. <laughs> Daughters. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Well, and that's how it all worked with us. We have a barn and a shop. They're the same size. I, I We go out there every weekend. I work on tractors. She... She works on horses. Isn't that great? I like I like things that when you get on them and you turn the key, they yeah. start. No uh, kidding. Uh, you know, so and she and likes, they don't <laughs> they don't um, uh, uh, sit out there and colic and uh, yeah. <laughs> have all the problems. Uh, yeah, of, I don't know. Horses. I said this. I had a little international this weekend that was kind of colic. It was, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, but it was in the carburetor. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, they don't have a will to die, die. like horses. <laughs> right. it, will it, to die. It, they just are it's a pain. But anyway, so. So let's go back to Ozark Integrated Circuits. Sure. Now, how did you get into that? And, and yeah, so I said when that. so when the when the other company you know uh, was clearly you know was uh, two thousand eight two thousand nine there were some there were some things going on in the economy back then mm, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. the uh, uh, you know it, it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna go um, mm-hmm. you know I was looking around what to do and I was like well I I have these skills I know integrated circuits I uh, I know I know simulation modeling. For, I, I know extreme environments, and uh, what am I going to do? And so, um, th- there were not a lot of job openings uh, in yeah. those fields at the time in Northwest Arkansas. You could have been a professor, though. You know, and, and, and I, mean, I and that that, that was that's basically yeah. what I did. Is uh, yeah. I, uh, I I I was basically a postdoc, okay. uh, so that so that I wasn't full time. So right. I could I could concentrate on uh-huh. uh, on starting the company, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, I like making things, and so when I started this company, I said, "Well, well let's try the hardware side." Right. So, uh, and it's, it it kind of works out as a as a beautiful thing for me because it I got to the first uh, really six seven years of the company. What I did, my technical expertise was I wrote the software for the company that made mm-hmm. the circuits. I see. Okay, mm-hmm. and that ended up being our competitive advantage yeah. starting out sure because yeah, yeah, because most mm-hmm. people go buy it. And the software to make chips starts at a hundred thousand dollars a person to mil- a million dollars. Good plus. lord! Wow! And so that what, did your yeah. software sell for that uh, much per seed? Oh hell no! Yeah. <laughs> and the funny no, no, different industry, yeah. Yeah. different industry. Yeah, this is well, you know, it's it's the it's the it's the software to make chips. So it's right. it's, it's in the grand scheme of things, it impacts a huge industry, but it's a small volume. There's yeah. not that many people in the world that actually design. Yeah, and you chips. don't have. I mean, what, where the hell else are you going to yeah. get this software yeah. at? Yeah, the competitive well, amount was probably not as great, right? No. Well, you talk about you talked about research mm-hmm. and professors. Well, you know, where did all the, where did all of the uh, software start for designing circuits? Mm-hmm. in universities yeah mm-hmm. so it all it actually some of the first open source mm-hmm. code was for circuit simulation <laughs> really yeah so didn't know anything about so it. i had this is some of the stuff i had learned at the previous company yeah. on the software side mm-hmm. and so when i started this company we evaluated solutions and we said you know we've got we've got more time than money mm. let's let's invest in the software mm-hmm. and so we we did we uh so we went and took the best in class things that were out there built a whole tool chain and what we learned along the way is, well, we were doing it. We were doing circuit design for w- really weird things. We were doing high temperature. We were right. doing radiation. Uh, we were doing extreme vibration, all these kind of things that they, at the time, really no one was doing anything in. Well, the the we didn't need the bleeding edge software. We weren't making Intel processors or anything. Because yeah. that's where most of the software is concentrated was on that really high performance. We were not doing that. We were doing the specialty. Well, by doing the software ourselves, we can customize it for what we were doing. Yep. Mm-hmm. So over over about like I said five, six, seven years, me and my partner uh, Jim Holmes at the company, we we just we built chips and we built we built the software around building the chips. And then uh, how do you build a chip? I mean, <laughs> I, 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 that's there's a, there's all it's easy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. 
Well, I said, I, I had <laughs> to take the chips, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I had an advantage. And we, we, I talk a lot about this. It's like why it's hard to explain to kids these days. Um, I, when I was in high school, one, one of the things I did was I worked in a photo lab. Mm -hmm. I did, that's great. It's fantastic. It's something, it's, it, it's, it. it's something that you, you can't do these days. No, you can't. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great experience. Well, totally. make it, if, if you understand how, uh, how a photo lab works, yes. think of a photo lab on steroids. That's what, how you make it, how you make integrated circuits. Okay. It's, so so yeah. how's that? What's the, I mean, what do you mean by that? Because you, you essentially make well, negatives. We call them masks. Got okay? it. That are okay. the chips and the different layers of the chips. That's what we're designing. And then you shoot those onto essentially film. Really? Which, yeah. Which is the which the is bread. the silicon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh shit. So we put different you put different photo. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's cool yeah, because so, because you just you're just literally layering layers yeah. upon layers yeah. upon layers. And there's the special thing that's in there. I mean, it's actually along the lines of what you we did you, you do in uh, photo processes. I mean, a lot of the things are based on silver, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, silver's conductive, so you could. What we what you were doing in a photo lab, you you could have made making circuits. God dang it! <laughs> if you'd know what that, God dang this man. What you know? Well, what could you have done with your life? So much, you know. We wouldn't could even be mad like though. number one computer. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, so, it no, is. It's really cool. It's, it's really cool. Do you have to? Uh, I so guess you have to we, be in the dark. Do you have to yeah, be in the dark yeah, room yeah, too? So and we and said to, so to be honest, so we don't really do any of that in house. Mm -hmm. That actual part, mm -hmm. I'll talk about what we do at Ozark. But that's the that's how you that's how you make in it, the actual chips. Hmm. Did not okay? know that. And yeah. is, is part of that is I mean, obviously, you want to get the chip as small, yeah, yes, as possible. Yes, yes, and that's where it, it wow. said, yeah, it, and that's like the world. we talked about this whole world of like it of design, like before they made software to do it, it they actually drew out the circuits and then reduced them down. Mm -hmm. It, just like like in the old like printing press days, you'd yes. draw out, mm -hmm. you'd shoot negatives, yes. right, of the paper. And then you draw yep. out the freaking rubies to do the CMYK yep. processing. Yep. And it, this, they they used ruby lith in the early days. Like I said, it's it's, it's freaking awesome. And I said that, and that's one of the lessons is like everything's based off something else. It we're, is. We're all, we're it is yes. interesting yes. how how <laughs> yes. some of these early experiences that you would think are unrelated no. to your ultimate, you know, profession. If you don't. You, yeah, I said that's, help. That's why yeah. I tell young people. I was like. Just don't say no to things when you're young. Just go try things. And yeah. that stuff's yeah. so cool too, because you'll never forget those times, spinning times, and, and those yeah. arca you know the, the historical foundation. You know, I mean, like in in photography, real quick. You know, like yeah. the whole digital photography stuff. People start on the digital side, and they never understand aperture, shutter speed, the physics of the light. They don't understand the dots per inch. You know, from back in the yeah. day, and how all that relates to pixels, and they can't get the qualities. They don't understand all those roots. But it's all based upon that stuff. It's all based on it, exactly. And that's why I, I shoot with ma old manual focus lenses. <laughs> Love it, man. <laughs> Dude, hey, yeah. Love that. You know, I've been wanting to get into medium format photography. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, when I was starting out that stuff, like we, I was running around in nature shooting pictures of waterfalls and, like, you know, positive transparency slides uh, type film. Didn't anybody ever tell you don't go chasing waterfalls? <laughs> I know that's your favorite song. The, you we you broke your you brought that out in one podcast. I, yeah, I think you like that. So. But that's his favorite Hegum song. I was like, what kind of music you like? Well, I like Waterfalls by TLC. Like, are you kidding me right now, dude? Is that seriously your it's music? It's not my favorite, but I, uh, I really, that's one. I asked you what kind of music you like. That's the first thing you said. <laughs> so, I mean. I have very wide ranging tastes, but anyway, like back in the, like you go out with your camera equipment and you couldn't see anything, and it'd take you a week and a half to develop the, yep. the film. You know, after you've been back from your trip, so satisfying. I don't know how I got on. And, that. I, and I mean, I, I don't know if this was your experience, but half the people that worked in photo labs back in the day were aspiring photographers. Absolutely, That's why they did. Yeah, it. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, with that, and not sure. so. I've, I I have lifelong friends that came, that still from over, oh gosh, almost forty years ago, yeah. where we where we met in a photo lab. So. That's so cool. But anyway, it's a small, like says, so a small world. It is uh, Arkansas. This is Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> this is well. That was that was Oklahoma. Two degrees of separation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, it was not too yeah. far removed. Yeah. From Eastern Oklahoma. So <laughs> yeah. the land time for but, God is what yeah. I call that. So like fifty years behind. Yeah. Well, hey, we won't get into that. Nah. <laughs> so, uh, so, but you, you, once you have the chip, you have to do. You have to put it in something, right? Because like right. when you talk to somebody about electronics, what they immediately think. If they know anything, they think like a green circuit board, right? That's yeah. what every yeah. that's what every right. popularized. Well, you have to take the chip and you have to put it. Usually, traditionally, we put it in something called a package. 
and that's the little black thing that you see on the board. Mm-hmm. So it like might be plastic, might be ceramic, okay. with little little leads coming out of it, and then that's soldered on a board, and then yeah. you have a system. And so um, you've, you've got to do all those things or you have nothing useful. <laughs> you have to be able to connect it all together. And so uh, when I started the company, we, we were concentrating on the chips and mm-hmm. the market we were going after with these extreme environments. So we were uh, looking at like oil and gas. Uh, mm-hmm. So like when drilling underground, yeah. high, high temperature, extreme vibrations, um, things like that. Well, what do you need a chip for to drill though? I mean, well, I'm really, I'm curious uh, about that. It's all elect- uh, the, 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 the drills are steered. I see. So you have, so you have to you have navigate. Motors, the, 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 yeah, yep. Okay. Yep. And then and then you have you log wells. You're logging pressures. You're trying to because you're okay. flying blind. You're trying to figure out what's down there. That okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So there's yeah. So that's actually yeah. Dri- uh, and actually, if you go back to Texas Instruments, it, Texas Instruments first projects were to serve the oil and gas industry. That's why it's hmm. in Texas. So how do you sell that? You you know you've got phone this calls, bro. You know, like, come on, man. I mean seriously. Well, like, that's, how do you yeah. sell this? Who do you sell that to? Well. So if you're so I said so my specialty has turned out in, in small business has been basically deep tech that's what I that's mm-hmm. what I do mm-hmm. and yeah you don't you don't go raise investment for that uh, traditional you don't go raise venture if you do you'll probably run out of business really quick because these are things that take could take five to ten years mm-hmm. to come to fruition it's well like pharmacy farm uh, deve- drug development exactly mm-hmm. well who funds that to start I I would guess big money I the uh, government okay. The government. It's uh, uh, depending on what stats you look at. The number one thing we we invested in produce in the U.S. is, is essentially pharma and and and, and medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, we we as as the government. It, yeah, from the yeah the government yeah. investments. But the you know, that next one would be military, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, so what see I how smart yeah. I am, Mark. Yeah, you yeah, see that shit, man. I've always known that about you. Thanks, man. So we make a lot of it. <laughs> we we said, you know, well, we can get into this if we have time, but you know the. That that's really what the Chips Act was recognizing is that mm-hmm. we're, we invent the U.S. is the engine of innovation of the world. Yeah. Right. And we may not make the chips, but we are the exactly. technology behind the chips. Is and what you're and so like what? Are, but we we sort of got into a mindset of outsourcing everything, and it got right. And, and, and that's so not good. It's not good. And so no. they said, what we need to get better at is the transition. And I'm Mr. Transition. I so, so, so <laughs> they're funding. They help to subsidize yes. so yes. that you can mani- we can manufacture yes. here as well. Yes, and yeah, that's what's going on right now with the Chips Act. But the uh, but with small business, there's there's a there's a program that a lot of people don't know about if you're if you're trying to start tech companies, which is the SBIR, Small Business Innovative Research. Right. Um, and there's a couple flavors of it, but you can get uh, you can get uh, like six to one year grants for. A hundred to to three four hundred thousand dollars, you can get um, you can get multi year multi million dollar contracts through it uh, mm-hmm. to go solve problems that the government thinks are deep tech problems. So that's what you that's what you that's yes. that yeah that's, that's what, what that's is, how is that I, what you're doing. And still? so yeah, and so that when I started the company that first year, I, I I've lost count, but I know I wrote anywhere from twenty plus proposals. That's mm-hmm. literally what I was doing with on you, my you personally. Yeah, yeah, grants, okay. yeah, grant basically. Yeah, yeah, grant proposals, yeah, grant proposals <laughs> contract proposals. Uh, to and and the way the program works is there's a set aside for every agency for this. It's a percentage of their overall budget. So everybody's got one. NASA has one. All the branches of DOD, NIH, NSF, mm-hmm. uh, and so you can go look around those. And it's uh, you talk about some really cool customer discovery. I really like working, for example, with the DOD because they're basically saying, we have this bizarre problem. Mm-hmm. Is there somebody out there that has an interesting solution? Mm-hmm. And so you start learning about these really interesting problems. And so, uh, so yeah, so I did that for a year and I was literally just about to give up. That's what I actually, I joke about it to this day. I got up my Blackberry. I had left. I'd left a board. Dude, I gave up blackberries. Mark is, I was like the last. I, I loved my blackberries. The last one yeah. out the door. Uh, I loved them. It's still in my museum. Oh I, yeah, I have I've a museum. got a bunch of them yeah. too. We've got Do a display you? case <laughs> in our living room that's got some old blackberries in. I want them. Oh, if you go to now? the if you go to the Smithsonian right now, they have a uh, the Natural Science uh, uh-huh. Museum has a display of all of cell phones yeah, and how they're made cool. and all the mater- m- minerals and and they have old cell phones. It, it was. Had a blast taking my daughter through there and yeah, showing her all these yeah. old cell phones. Yeah, those, we used to have those ones that were like in a pack. And yeah, you'd be like <laughs> huge. When I first met Mark for my interview, he was on that daggum BlackBerry. He's multitasking while he's talking to me, writing a, one of his Zweig letters. It's probably it's not good. <laughs> I was not 
Um, How many words on this wide letter? You do at least 2,500 words. On that oh, no, 500 to 1,000. But okay, I, I but wrote like print. 100 and some odd articles in a year. I on still your, do But it. on your BlackBerry. Yeah. I, st- I do it on an iPhone now, which <laughs> I hate the lack of keyboard. I know. Is, the feel. Sure oh, the, no, the ball on that. And the ball, is, yeah. That was, yeah. I mean, oh, gave me the best awesome. brick breaker game. Of I used all to have yeah, Exactly. <laughs> I was nice. I used to keep spare That's parts. That's why I hated it when they wouldn't. I'm I, like, why can't you be more successful, Blackberry? Because you're going to lose brick and brick breaker. I changed that ball before. Okay? I changed mine, too. Yeah. Did you? Because it got all, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, it would wear out. But then they wear out. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, so so I was literally. I have, I have, I have, I have, well, no, I had a board meeting okay. uh, after a year of doing this and, uh, we, we said, yeah, I don't know if this is going to go. So like I've written 30 of these things. Nothing you said, anything back. You know, we'd done some consulting things or whatever, but it was, yeah. you know, it wasn't, it wasn't turning anything. And literally I got in the parking lot and I checked my Blackberry. It says, you know, award notice. Oh, <laughs> like, great. Awesome. So like, okay, let's give this a go. Uh-huh. So, uh, that was just about the time my, my daughter arrived. So I'm literally, I'm going, we're going to the hospital. So how long ago was this? This was, uh, so this was 2012. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I uh, so we, we start the company and, uh, like I said, I said a year later, I finally, let's so say we, we finally hit it. And, uh, uh, and so then th- basically we started from almost, almost nothing Yeah, and, ba- and basically designed our first chip in six months. Okay. So when you were applying for those grants and stuff and you said you went to your board that day, yeah. uh, I mean, how were you, were you self-funded? I mean, when you, yeah, about it was board, all, it was, was it just basically board? all, yeah. All, just like all an equity. advisory. Yeah, basically, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah. people just got in yeah, and they're yeah. going to help this yeah, way. Yeah, that was sweat exactly. equity. Sweat board. equity basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Love it. So uh, that's a smart move. I think a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. And I said, and there's things, there's things I would do differently about it, about defining Mm -hmm. the sweat. Mm -hmm. That's such a big deal. (laughs) I love that point because I love sweat equity. I love it. I love it because I, I mean, I'm a contributor. Like if you, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm in, right. You know, and I will contribute above and beyond what I said I will, except unless it's Mark, he contributes more than I do on this podcast, but. Anyway, that no. don't want to bust out a live board meeting right now. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but defining that sweat equity like that to me is kind of this yep. magical thing. Yeah. That, and, it, and and it's never perfect. It but, not, yeah. but, and uh, I think that's mm-hmm. the, I, I'm with you. It's like one of the number one things when I, I advise somebody yeah. is like, what? Let's figure out a structure that's probably going to work for you and going to grow into because so, because you don't want to get into sore. Yeah. Sore feelings and stuff. Because yeah, of, yeah. How do you measure it? But well, sure. I put yeah. it in my operating agreement now. Yeah. Well, like, like I mean, is that okay? I mean, I think that's. that's I mean, how are you going to really get rentals? good people unless you're willing to provide some kind of ownership opportunity? Yes. Sure. I, yeah. You know, I think a lot and, and of small it, business yeah. owners are too and selfish that was, in yeah. that regard. And yeah. that's one of the things we you pivoted know? on with our company over time is we we went from just having the original founders to actually having uh, mm-hmm. you know a a stock option plan yeah. and all this, and so yeah, pretty much all my employees uh, they always end up at a at a being essentially. Own you know owning a piece of the company yeah that's cool that's how over time so uh, that's something I would have done from day one is yeah. put that on just, just put put yeah, that, yeah. put, it, put it, set it up to where there was a pool for that and sure. yeah. yeah so you know those things yeah. get ex- the later you do them the more expensive they are that's yeah true. it's yeah, always a problem right. I mean yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it so is. it is but you know we did some things right I started out as a C corp I didn't do an yeah. S or an LLC I, it was thank it, God because you know, LLCs in particular are they don't they don't scale. They yeah. don't scale, and I yeah, I, yeah. I, we just converted an LLC yeah. into a C corp, and that was some of the mm. best advice I got when it, I started was to just like yep. yeah, you're not, and at the time the, the taxes mattered, and it's like you're not making much money anyway. Right. Just We're do in a C corp mode. Just what difference C-Corp. does it make? Right. Plus, you can always bonus <laughs> out all your profits yeah. and, and through the payroll, yeah. Yeah. and in which case you got no profit. So anyway. we've, we've talked about that. I mean, I think yeah. from a start like that makes sense, but I ran into problems on acquisition. Mm-hmm. Like being acquired as a C corp or S corp is extremely problematic. Yeah, it's, it's as well. Yeah, yeah. But the LLC is super simple. Well, it's not. To it's buy not it. necessarily it's problematic simple. in the sense if you've got good bylaws and shareholder yes. agreements. Yes. The LLC, any member could hold up your whole deal. Yeah. You realize that. Yeah. Whereas in a typical corporation, a majority of shareholders can make the decision. Yes. And you say, so I'm, yeah. I'm a fan so of it's, corporations. Yeah. I mean, and I and you can work in drag along clauses and other right. things right from day one. We should probably have an episode about that in Digs and Deep. Oh, yeah. Deepness because yes, we do need like, to. The thing is, what I, so what I experienced was is that 
when we were out trying to raise capital for our company, the second that I said we were an S corp, we would have folks go, no, we're out. Well, you know why? Because they can't own their ownership interest in another entity in the name of another entity. That's the problem with an S corp. So, so, but how do you, that, that's what I'm kind of a saying. A C-Corp, though, you can do yeah, that. You can do that, yeah. Okay, that's the difference. But they so. didn't want to change the C-Corp. They wanted to go to LLC. Okay, all well, of them did. I, I'm just telling you. I, I, I don't I, know why. I'm just like, I, it's like the all attorneys the are automatically there. If you said, I want to go start a business, they'll be like, we'll set you up with an LLC. LLC. It's the first knee jerk reaction, reaction, but they need to know what your longer term plan is. Yeah, exactly. Are. You have to you have to fit For it to your. Business. Yeah, if you're just trying to get something up, you're going to sell it or maybe yeah. and know. not bring other owners, owners in. in. And out. Okay, L- that's that's where LLC. Yep. That LLC yep. is great. So yep. anyway, which is kind on. of what yeah. they're going. Oh, for. sorry. No, 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 so, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, so, but, yeah, that's so, a deep so, conversation. It is. But yeah, so deep thoughts, deep Jack and dude. Do you remember? Oh hell yes, Saturday Night Live. Hell, that was the best, man. That's Deep why I thoughts. watched this and all awful. Deep thoughts on other shit. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Yeah, we, well, we get a lot of sidetracks. No, uh, well, yeah, you'll you'll okay. send me down all sorts of <laughs> SNL. He, he's like uh, in the ride, yeah, man. No, I know. I'm telling you, Matt's a great guy. <laughs> uh, it's why you can. I liked him. He's just down to earth. Yeah. Well, C corps. Okay. They're, they're like butter. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> like that. See, rabbit trail. More cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> So Matt, so you, you got you started out. You had an advisory yeah. board. You, you yeah, created yeah, a C corp. Yeah. You got um, grant money. Yeah, yeah. After a year. Yeah, after a year, and and uh, well, you yeah. know, there was still there was new struggles after that because sure. you had to learn how to administer those those projects because it's it's right. not like you just get a bunch of money and you know hey you're yeah. done you've you've got to ha- you've got to set up you know government <laughs> basically as soon as you start a company that's going to do government contracting you you kind of in a way need to be a a miniature mm. uh, defense mm. contractor. Like, you reflect it, the market that you serve. serve. Exactly. Totally. Yes, yep. I've so, always said that. So so you have to learn. You said, sure. And that's one of the big, the other, if you're going to go down this path, the next big mistake people make is they don't, they don't know how to set up the books from day one. Right. And, that be, yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you set them up wrong, fixing them, that gets really expensive. Like I'm sure capturing that overhead is yeah, a big exactly. thing. It's all about your overhead. Yeah, I'm sure, and they look into all that. They have the right to see all that stuff, and I'm sure they do pretty sophisticated PO processing. Oh, you can't. They 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 do, and then also it's it's completely different based on which who you're talking to. Yeah, which agency? Different agencies have different different access, which makes the boat billing like you got to be you got to have your eyes dotted. So that was you know when when we started, it was like I I I, my hat rack was full of hats. Mm -hmm. Right, I I I did accounting, I did everything, so Mm -hmm. I learned a lot along the way. And I still say the happiest day I had was when uh, my my bookkeeper, who still works works for me, when she came on. Oh yeah, I totally. Didn't, I wasn't doing entries and I wasn't doing all this stuff. But hundred um, percent. But yeah, so we. But you know, we had our struggles. Uh, it was still sort of a, a touch and go for several years. But it was basically, uh, I think it was around 2015. We finally just sort of hit it off that we. The, the you know you, you're putting ideas in the ether. It, it, once you get in, it's a two way street because you're performing on these topics, mm-hmm. and you know what the next topic they're going to ask for is probably going to be based on what you did. Mm-hmm. So once you're in, you're starting to become a thought leader, and if you're doing this right in the yeah. in in, uh, in the process, and so we finally sort of got to a point where there was a cons- I think there was becoming a consensus on the approach that we had to high temperature. And we and that, that we're, we're, we still to this day think it's hilarious. We got freaked out. We won two projects at the same time. You know, <laughs> we were so small back then we couldn't even think conceive of that. Yeah. And uh, and we said, well, this thing, this might go. And uh, so we got those two, and they were the first. They're multi phase, so we got two phase ones. And for us, the goal was starting out. We wanted to get a phase two because that would be probably c- close to a million dollars mm-hmm. over two years. We can we can do some stuff, right? We got a baseline. So we finally around then around 2015 we, we we got one of those transitioned to a phase two, and uh, and then basically we were off to the races since then. Then I really started being able. I started hiring full time engineers. We weren't all part timers yeah. doing other things, um, and yeah, we grew it. I said I literally grew it from a hundred dollar company, and now we're you know we're we're uh, we're usually doing three and a half to uh, I think we'll be probably doing ten million in revenue here awesome. in a year in a year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, and so hockey stick Fantastic. and all that good stuff. Yeah, right, man. So twenty employees now, and and that's growing pretty steadily. And are y'all all in Elkins too? Yeah. No, no. We're, so we're actually we started back uh, in the in the in the uh, tech park at the at, uh, down South Fayetteville. Okay, yeah. 
yeah, and we're still there to this day. I still actually, I still technically have the original room we started in as one of our oh, nice. part of our suite. Cool. We just kept adding, yeah. adding, adding. Yeah. And now we're the building <laughs> we're in. We're we're the biggest tenant. Um, and uh, and then what happened is we started making these chips. Coming back to like the technology, mm -hmm. um, we 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 as we got to this point where we could actually start making them, we got off the paper and started making them. We realized that making the chips was only half the battle. We you had to put them in something. To, to even test them. Mm -hmm. And so we started learning about packaging. Okay. So like what you put the chips in and for high temperature, it's not going to be plastic. It's ceramics. Okay. So mm. then my hand, my hands on kicked in. Yeah. And I was like, you can make circuits out of, <laughs> out of ceramics. Huh. This is really cool. Do you have a kiln? Yes. And that's, that's, that's really what Ozark okay. has. Our in-house is all around, uh, is all around the, uh, so we designed the circuits we help develop the processes to, to manufacture the, the the integrated circuits. But what we do here in, in Fayetteville is uh, we we do the uh, all the ceramic packaging. So yeah, we have we have kilns, we have printers, we have punches, uh, and then mm. we have the the thing that you have to do then is get the mm. signal off of the chip onto that board or package. So we have these uh, machines that are really like industrial robots called wire bonders that can make this tiny little uh, wire a thousandth of a human hair thick uh, for, go from one point to the other. All, and then you program it to do this. Really oh, cool. so fascinating. I love it this. Is. Let me ask you this. And I had some family members who are in the ceramics trade. Um, Mark, here. you're talking and, low like you, nobody can see your face uh, right here. And they all called kilns kills. Kills? <laughs> Do they call them that in we, your field? It's something unique to our vernacular well, here. It's right. like, I got to get a new kill. I'm we're, like, what are you talking about? We're engineers, okay. so we call them we call them furnaces. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, you don't call them refractories? No, we call them furnaces. Okay. Yeah. They go, if they go really high in temperature, they're furnaces, and if they're moderate range, they're ovens. That's our goal. Okay. Right. Well, that's good go. then. I'm, I'm happy yeah. to hear so, that because it always But yeah, but everything, but we, well, we run into all this stuff where it's actually specced in cones and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the materials, because it comes from ceramics. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. And we're, make, we're making circuit boards out of it. But, uh -huh. but what, we, what, what we ended up figuring out through all of this discover, customer discovery was that, you know, you're making chips, cool, but there were chips out there. There were, there were, there were materials and things, but what no one had done is put it all together into something that would work in almost any application. And, it, and if you look at what electronics have turned into, whether it's, you know, you're, you're in your cell phone or running the window up and down in your car, it's basically a computer. It's, sure. it's, it's just a different scale, different scales. Of computers. Right. I understand. That. Right. Yeah. It's, Every it's, car has got 20 or 40 of them or however it's, many it's got. Exactly. Yeah. And so, well, guess what? If you're going to do a high temperature, what you need to make is a computer. Right, you need to make a general purpose computer, and then you can put stuff around it, customize it for the mm -hmm. uh, for the for the customer. Right? So, yeah, yeah. So that's what we do. We make uh, single board computers, uh, so, ceramics with our own chips on them. Maybe there's somebody out there that's going to be listening that's as ignorant as I am. Like, what's the difference between what do you mean by computer versus the chips? Well, yeah. So it's Is it's the right. So basically, ba by making the chips into a computer. So what does that mean, though? How, what, it means it's programmable. That's okay. really what it means. It means now software can come to play because so you can put you software you can, in, it, chip. in the yeah. chip. That's really what a computer That's a computer. Computer. That yeah. that becomes a computer. Wow, I'll be damned. And so you do this on a micro scale. That's that goes back to Turing. He uh, theorized that if, yeah. if you made a machine this way, you you basically could you make it do anything. It's a general purpose machine. So are you made, or do you guys? <clears throat> Are y'all writing the scripts in the software that goes yep. into the chip? Yes, thing? we we do that. It depends on the customer. There's some where we do everything, and there's others where we say, "Here you go. Here's the start," and they're going to write their own. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's that's the, so the, it allows it allows them to customize it further into their application. Can they go back and customize it as well? Can yeah. you just throw in yeah. new scripts and yes, exactly, yes. And it's like when you can take your car to the dealer or do an over the air update. It's the same right. sort of thing. Yeah. But the difference is the applications we're going into might be oil, an oil and gas drilling rig or a jet engine. Mm -hmm. That's we're we're basically making mm -hmm. those same kind of computers that have on a, on a you know on, in your engine management system in a car. But we're making them for these these other. You've uh, also, I'm sorry, done stuff for NASA. And yes, all, haven't yeah. you? And how about yeah. SpaceX? Are they a point? Yeah, no. Uh, so we, we've we've never broken in with SpaceX, but mm -hmm. yeah, we have done uh, a lot of our early work. Actually, our first contract was for NASA, 
And uh, a lot of it was driven by they eventually want to land their own stuff on Venus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's almost 500 degrees Celsius and 100 times Earth pressure, and it rains sulfuric acid. Holy cow. Oh, that's no big deal. So we got to have... <laughs> <laughs> that's what you call a not-so-friendly environment, exactly. right? Well, and so <laughs> that's what I... It was a, it was one of our first applications, and mm-hmm. so that's what we actually called it, like, the, the where we figured out a lot of this stuff that we're now doing at, like, a lot of our products are around 200 and 250C, our commercial products. So like it's centigrade, centigrade, yeah. So Sorry. like like lasagna temperatures in the in the three hundreds Fahrenheit, yeah. three to four hundred Fahrenheit. <laughs> lasagna temperatures. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I. Yeah, that's what I. It's I awesome. try to relate everything. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's where a lot of our commercial stuff is. But so when I talked to customers, like how we figured out how to make that stuff work for long term, I said yeah. Venus. So was, so instead of a moonshot, we had a Venus shot. Yeah, yeah. just like. The moonshot advanced us into doing essentially yeah. all the semiconductors, a lot of these other things. For Ozark, it was a Venus shot. We we did all these programs and trying, like, how would you make this work on Venus? And, you know, literally that's when I started putting circuits in kilns <laughs> was just to see if they would work. Test them. So, so them. is it, uh, so is it ceramic that can withstand that? that that's, Venus? Part, that's part of the, yeah, that's part of the, part of the puzzle is the, hmm. the yeah, the, the system that makes the most sense for that you put, integrate all the chips together with is ceramics. That's really where we got into it. Um, and then the, to make the chips work at those temperatures, we actually use different things than silicon. One of them, silicon carbide. And so that was a material we got into way, way early. Um, and so, imagine a lot of that stuff you're doing is very proprietary, secretive. It, yeah, well, you know, it, it's, it varies. Uh, I've always told people, it's like, I, the, I, I think this is one of our key advantages. One of the problems with technologists is they'll get welded to something that they just, I love this. This mm-hmm. is my thing. This is the best way. Mm-hmm. Ozark is not that way. We're welded to this to the problem. Like, yeah, what solves the problem? So if something new comes along, got to keep learning. Exactly. Our goal is to be there at the table when something new comes along. Yeah. And 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 if it's better than what we're doing for an application, then we'll use it. But there's a lot of variables. It might be better in terms of performance, but it might not be better in terms of cost. Mm-hmm. It might not be scalable to volume. So you sure. have to always be be cognizant of these things and know mm-hmm. there's not one solution. There's, there's multiple solutions, and you're always mapping them to the application. That sounds like a quote from an entrepreneur, or not an engineer. It does. I was just thinking business is much the same totally, way. Totally, yeah. yeah. You can't get wedded and say, well, this is the answer. Sure. Everybody's got to go on EOS yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know? Yeah. It, it, there, it, you've got to be open, and you've got to be learning. Yeah. And all I, the time. And I think that's what you said. That, yeah. I, I'm hoping that's what we see more of over the coming years with what the, the the investments from the government and related to the Chips Act is more problem solving and not, yeah. Well, I think this is the you know this is the only the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. And please get could I just you know give me another million dollars because I I want to finish this thought. I was like, who needs yeah. the thought? Right. Yeah. They want the stakeholders that have the problems at the table from day one. Yeah, they're so. trying to they're 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 trying to pay for their to the yeah ensure their theory and, not continue exactly to yeah yeah. Problem. yeah. yeah. So, so where do you go with this business, Matt? Well, I said, we, so essentially uh, people ask like, you know, where, where are we? I said, well, I think we're probably at least a decade ahead of anyone else because we had the, the just determination and mm-hmm. to, to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I've, I've, there's actually been some pretty, uh, large market reports come out and list us as one of the disruptors and literally be on charts where we're the only company that's not valued in billions of dollars. So, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're pretty excited about where, where, where it is. So, and, right. and I'm, you know, I am, uh, at the end of the day, whether I'm an Arkansan by, uh, by birth or by, uh, or, or by spirit, um, uh, I, I just want to, I want to build it and I want to build stuff here. That's, yeah, you know, love it. Love and that's what, and we people, all love yeah. That. And what the people have always asked is like, well, you know, you're, you're growing at this rate and stuff and can you, can you grow the team? And I said, we've always been able to, you yeah. know what? One of the biggest things what we export from the state are smart people, and when you give them an opportunity to come back yep. here and do cool stuff, they they there's a or stay here and do cool stuff. That's right. That's, Doesn't it yeah. bug you guys though the way we're stereotyped out there in the in the media? I mean, it's just it, it, you know it, it's like I saw that <laughs> movie that came out recently with David Duchovny and and uh, oh at the yeah the airport movie uh, yeah and and uh, uh, Meg Ryan. And it's like it starts out. Where are you? I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Okay, um, you know, in some flyover country or whatever. Some some negative aspersions, you know, 
that's the way people think of us. And we do have smart people here. We, and we have people who can actually do stuff. Oh, yeah. I just hate I kinda, that. I kind of like it, though. It you gives do? you, yeah, it gives opportunity to shank somebody. You can, you just, it, 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 I mean, shank him. You sound like a prison. No, okay. <laughs> so, but it's kind of okay. a prison. I mean, it's a little bit like that, though. I mean, it, like, because they can got, surprise people. Surpri- yeah. There you go. That's a better and way to I, I put think it. if you look at all of our, 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 well, range, shank them. our range of success stories in Arkansas, surprised people. Totally. They came out of nowhere. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they, they let you, oh, don't worry yeah. about that. That's, what happened with our our entire business? Mm-hmm. Like they let eyes. Oh, you got some goofballs over there. You what do you know about, about software? What do you yeah. know about e-com? What do you know right. about retail? Right. Yeah, and this has to happen in New York or L.A. or yeah. No, Austin we got to shank. We got to do our shanking. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Same thing with um. Yeah. Well, I try to work with everyone, so I'm not planning on shanking anyone. But okay, uh, okay so <laughs> for a disclaimer, I'm a little scared. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, <laughs> shanking. Okay, I don't, or, even, I don't even know Matt, how you make a shank. Like, y'all need to acknowledge that I'm not talking about a physical. Do we like shanking. use a fork to make that or something? So I, I have no idea because <laughs> okay. I'm talking in figuratively, figuratively speaking. Of yes. Shanking. Okay. Okay. Jeez, that's, that's fine. <laughs> trying to get me in trouble here. We, you're trying to get me out. You're trying to oust me from our LLC for this podcast. Is what no, you're trying no. to do. It's your bankroll, buddy. You're the one supporting this thing. <laughs> Thank God. Um, so, well, that's very interesting. So, so what are your plans personally? You plan on keep working forever? Are you going to turn the reins over to somebody else and still be an owner? Or it's it's the do you have any plan yeah, at all? I so the way my brain the get way, up and the, work the way my brain works with a business is if you if you're if, in, in my past experiences, but if you try to set it up to sell it, it doesn't work. So I'm mm-hmm. focused. I'm just continuing to focus on solving the problem. Yep, there you go. And I, it, it, until there's a day I wake up and I don't want to do this anymore, I'm going to keep doing it. There you go. I, as long as I have the resource to be able to do it and the opportunity to do it, it's. I think these are some of the uh, uh, coolest problems to solve. And uh, I get to work with some of the best partners in the world. Uh, and I get to make the you know the U.S. be the most competitive in the, this area that I can make him. Love it. Somebody comes along and says, "Matt, I'll give you a hundred million dollars to get out of this thing." What do you do then? Two fifty. He wants two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> That's his response. <laughs> I mean, I'm just you know. <laughs> You could go fool around with your yeah. tractors oh, it, it, and kilns or whatever it, the hell it, you want to if, do. If 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 scenarios came along that let mm-hmm. the company scale up, then I would I would think about that. It's it's mm-hmm. it's about the mission for me. So okay, well that's good. I, I, I love, love this. I love you, man. You're great, <laughs> man. Matt is a great guy. He's just one of Kid the you. many great people we have here, and one of the many people yeah. that I know. Well, I love the and, and, the mission purpose behind a business. To me, is it, it is. is absolutely significant. Like. It, 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 this is what drives me crazy, though. Most people, when you start talking entrepreneurship and business, they ascribe these evil motives and greed yeah. just to make money. It, 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 it's rarely is it, it's, it's like it's a mindset. seventh or eighth down on the list. It's yeah. like, I hope I can make a living doing what I love to do something. Yeah. 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 And, and then the good find, news for yeah. folks that aren't, that aren't in the entrepreneurial space that might have that perspective. Mm-hmm. Is that most people that do start businesses to make money are not really going to be successful? Exactly. They, they as I said they and they fail. They end up and they usually end up miserable. Right. Totally in the miserable. Exactly. Because it's you know running a business is really hard work. It's a labor of love. <laughs> it takes. Uh, it, we always totally. say we don't believe in work life balance. We believe in work life integration. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. It, it's yes. one and the same. Yeah. You know it's and, funny. Like and, even just last night. First of all, I made. Two nights in a row, I made a really bad mistake. Mm-hmm. I ate some nerd clusters before bed. But they're so, so good. Da- aren't dude, they're they? I know. I can't stop <laughs> so eating those things. The, the, the night before, my, my daughter turned me lobby. on to him. Yeah. I might hobble lobby grabbing, a, getting a ruler actually for this thing to to make shift that. Don't look at the engineering of that. That's terrible, man. Don't be judging. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I saw nerd clusters. And I, about, and I was in the aisle, and I did the impulse thing. And just, yeah. oh, man, there's some nerd clusters. And they only Bitter. come in like a huge bag. Well, yeah. Okay. Was, yeah. So yeah. I ate them then that night. I didn't sleep like hell the night before. Sure. And then last night, I get home. My wife, for some reason, she saw the popularity of the nerd clusters. So she bought some. So she bought a family. Like, I'm talking, it was like a gallon bag. Oh, buddy. And I dipped my hand in there two times last night. So I, I fall asleep fine. It's like I can't stop. I know. And then you wake up. 
and I wake up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and my mind is just racing. But my point to this is, is that I wake up and all I'm doing in my mind subconsciously is thinking about all the business problems I know. going on. Oh, I mean, gosh. it's just like, dude, I mean, I so feel like true. I was like literally spinning. That happens so many times, but just so fresh in my memory. And I can't go back to sleep. Right. Uh, a, nerd clusters. B, problems but the point of that is is if unless you're mission bound in your business because what i started to do is consciously start overcoming that mm -hmm. by going why am i doing what i'm doing what is my purpose behind what i'm doing, sure. I'm doing? yeah because all these problems exist mm -hmm. i'm like oh that's right i'm doing a i'm doing b right doing c this is what and this is a bigger vision behind it and i right. and if and i don't do, you yes and if i don't do this mm -hmm. no one's going to do it therefore the problem's still going to exist and no, things won't true. progress and be better. And, and I said, I, I'm biased and I'm sure, you, I'm sure you are. And I think the entrepreneurial mindset is a, is the right mindset. Yes. It, it, you can apply it to running a business or you can apply it to, to being in, in an organization of any kind, not totally. a nonprofit, uh, in government. And that's that's, right. that's what, how I've probably ended up in also along the way, working with so many different organizations is mm -hmm. because yeah. I get the same buzz from it the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the same high from yeah. applying that that mindset to hey this is a really cool problem what's our mission how do we solve it and if you get state of the core you, you can solve anything totally agree and like because you have you could have this if you have the same mentality of hey i'm going to start a business to make money mm -hmm. a you're going to get your butt kicked at, at the 3 a.m right right yes same thing is if you go work for a company and it's about hey how much time do i get off what are my benefits and how yeah, much am i getting paid yep. what's my ceiling for growth what are all these pathways and plans yes. like you are in the wrong mentality but if you're going there and you're like hey you know what i love what this company's doing exactly i'm gonna do this here's what's disappointing though i had an interview with a guy mm -hmm. a few days ago about a position and he was speaking mission and vision about, you know, cause I was sharing him what I'm doing. He's like, man, I love it. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And so disappointingly, this person he, uh, text messaged me back, you know, the next day he's like, Hey, listen, I, I'm, I, I can't, I, I can't do it. I'm like, man, I thought we had a really fantastic good connection. Yes. On the really important it's stuff. Like you, what happened was you went away and got suffocated mm -hmm. by someone out there. That was, Hey, well, what's the pay? What's the ladder and the skill? It probably their spouse. Broad. He doesn't have the same entrepreneurial orientation. No. I think a lot of people end up like that. But um, um, it's too it, bad. We've had that um, discussion bad. right here with our spouses. Eric and I brought our spouses. Yeah, remember when we should. We should have had Matt's here. We should, with yeah. Us. Okay. How we we, we should have with the horse women. What I yes. love about uh, yeah. do a horse, horse. horse. <laughs> Yeah, we should get Christy on here. Yeah, we need to get Christy's got a real business with her horse farm. So I have no horses. Or I will have no relevancy to that. Y'all can do like a horse here. combo. Yeah, you don't have to have me here for that one because yeah. I won't add anything to it other than stupid questions. Well, I'll, I, I, the one great <laughs> quote I learned was. If you're talking to the horse's rear, you're not talking to the horse's head or something like well, that. I well, I think you could, if you're not talking to the horse's head, you're talking to the horse's rear. I don't know. But, you could play the same role as uh, Best in Show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, which role in Best in Show is uh, that? That, that oh, movie it is, is one of my favorites. The, the, uh, the guy who's the announcer. Um, oh, yeah. Um, what, Willard? If I remember his name. Oh, Fred, Will, uh, Fred Willard? Yes. yes. Yeah. I could do yeah, that. Yeah, you could. Yeah, because he, because he, uh, that's why I thought he knew nothing about dogs, and that was, was so funny about. Like, it. why does that matter? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you, that right. episode with their wives. You remember yeah. how we like? I mean, at the beginning, it was really like they had a lot. You know, like they knew what they're talking about. By the end of it, you and I had like really shown the audience who's boss in that relationship. How oh, right. me and you. He loves to say <laughs> stuff like this. It's because it's the complete opposite. Okay. I, my I, wife was so attracted to me after that episode. It was ridiculous. She's oh like, gosh. you're such a smart, beautiful, sexy man. <laughs> I don't know about you. I that's how I, I left that. I can't say I've experienced that reaction. Well, uh, but uh, anyway, yeah. you know my wife. She's pretty hard-edged. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, I think that's very interesting, though, to, um, to talk about this. In, um, in, uh, and, and I commend you. Um, Matt, for having the the long game and the right motivations, yeah, and also the ability to do all the other things that you do. It's not like you don't have any other interests or life. 
Yep. You know, you've been able to build this business and redo your your places there at Elkins and be very active in restoring the town to a yeah, and, and guiding its future I, with I, your your uh, your yeah, work. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I've, I've had the uh, the the uh, honor of serving on the city council now for five years. Oh, cool. Yeah, and uh, it's been a you know, it it's been a, a fascinating experience. I said a, I I never knew I would know so much about sewers. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh but is a lot of the skills I've transferred. Yeah, sure. The mindset transfers everywhere and it was it, it's been it's been it really has been great to see the community mm -hmm. uh continue to grow and and it's been great to be a part of that. And I said I'm I'm on my way to the airport and it's not for work, it's actually for volunteer uh, oh, work. I'm I'm sitting on the board of uh one of the largest technical professional societies in the world. That's I triple A bet. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. what I thought. Well, this is fantastic, and we're really glad you're here. Yeah, um, it's been great. And and uh, I guess I'm going to end with one final question. Maybe this is too broad for the amount of time we've got, which is just a couple minutes. But Matt, tell us, tell our listeners, what advice do you have for them if they want to get into their own business? What's the most important thought that you would have for them? Well, I think it's, we kind of hit on it. You have to um, absolutely match something you love mm -hmm. with something you can make some money at. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think that is, and, and I have that conversation many uh, many times over with with young people. Uh, and I guess I'd add to that: don't be afraid to get into it and pivot to something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't hold to that theory. Don't like hold to the original it. theory. Yeah. You, need, you need one to start with. Yeah. If we hadn't pivoted two times in the history of the company by listening, okay, mm -hmm. we we wouldn't we wouldn't still be here. We yeah. pivoted at least twice. Yeah, you got to yeah. grow. You got to adapt to your market. You yeah. got to learn things and change. I mean, Eric completely transformed his marketing consulting business into a software company. Yeah. That's a great example, uh, an excellent mm -hmm. example of that. Um, so yeah, it's hard think, as hell, but scary. But. I think especially <laughs> yeah. when, when the world is in such a dynamic state as it's in and constant change, mm -hmm. um, one must be open to change. Yeah, exactly. And I willing guess it, to do it. Let's just summarize it. Be open to change. If you're going to yeah. start a business. Agreed. Very good. All right. Well, we are so glad you're here and hope you have a good trip and, um, want to thank all of our listeners and encourage you to get onto our website of www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com and see our our uh our our whole bank of episodes out there and as we discussed last time as mark said you don't have to log in to our website no so you could you can just like hit picking. our website or whatever you do uh, i'm sorry i'm picking on you man it's okay like i mean sorry, there's no login required just get on our website. <laughs> click on some things. Click get on it. Click. Get on it. Click. <laughs> Subscribe. Right. And if you have a question that you'd like for us to do, address on the show, we're glad to t accept yeah. those. And if you want more of Matt, come back on. And, Let us know, man. Yeah. We love and it. Matt, if somebody wants to reach out to you, what is your email address? Uh, Francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, at OzarkIC.com. Sweet. All right. Thank you so much. Well, We'll say goodbye now. This has been another episode of Big, Big Talk, Talk About, About Small Business. business. Y'all be good now. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Big Talk About Small Business. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming shows, be sure to head over to our website, www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com and click on the Ask the Host button for the chance to have your questions answered on the show. Stay connected with us on LinkedIn at Big Talk About Small Business. And be sure to head over to our website to read articles, browse episodes, and ask questions about upcoming shows.